Hello, and welcome to another video. This time, we will do something really interesting, and I hope that it will teach you a thing or two. If so, make sure to leave a like and share it with your friends. Also, make sure to subscribe for more interesting and useful stuff. Doing all kind of hardware testing and uploading videos comparing CPUs and GPUs and their performance in gaming, we constantly receive comments like, the CPU is the bottleneck, the GPU is the bottleneck, CPU is not 100% utilized, and so on. But what exactly is a bottleneck when gaming? Today, we will show you a good example of that how it actually looks, and how we can possibly make our system produce better gaming results without changing any hardware. Before we begin with the tests, let's explain it a bit. The CPU is responsible for processing the game's instructions and processing input from the player. Things like handling the NPCs, environment, and simulations are all done by the CPU. This is why games which have a heavier focus on physical simulations require a more powerful CPU. One of the more critical roles for the CPU in most games is also to pass information to the GPU. In order to make it easier to understand, I will simplify the role of the CPU. The CPU is responsible for telling the GPU what to do. The GPU is responsible for rendering what you see on screen. The CPU describes to the GPU the different objects on screen, where they are, and other information. Obviously, it's more complex than this, but we're simplifying. The GPU takes the information given to it by the CPU and converts it to an image, so most of the time, the GPU's tasks are much more demanding than the CPU's. Now, a CPU bottleneck is when the processor doesn't have enough power to keep up with the processing power of the GPU, holding it back, resulting that our GPU is not being 100% utilized, thus generating fewer frames per second. GPU bottleneck, on the other hand, is when our GPU is being 100% utilized, leaving the CPU chilling. In that case, that's the maximum gaming performance that our GPU can deliver. Of course, there are other factors too, like CPU speed and architecture, RAM speed and RAM timings, but we won't go into detail on that. Those who are already subscribed to our channel have seen that we are being flexible and do all kind of comparisons, either we have a CPU or GPU being bottlenecked. But the point is to understand these bottlenecks and what holds back the performance of our system. Is it the GPU or the CPU? So now, let's get into some real gaming scenarios and see what I mean. For our tests, we are using a Ryzen 3 3200G, a $100 4 core 4 threaded CPU, and a Ryzen 5 2600X a 6-core, 12-threaded CPU, paired with an RX 5700 XT, a $400 really capable GPU. We should consider the fact that modern games will utilize all four cores, so having only four cores will leave us with fewer processing power because we always have other applications running on the background, including our operating system. Now, let's go to the benchmarks. Let's start with the 3200G and a really heavy game at 1080p low settings first. In this case, the GPU must render frames at 1080p resolution in low quality, and for this specific GPU, it won't be a big deal, meaning that it can do it very easily. We see our CPU usage is almost constantly at 100%, and our GPU jumps between 40 and 60% sometimes lower, sometimes higher. Here, we have clearly a CPU bottleneck, giving us about 60 frames per second on average. 
running the same settings with the 2600X, we get about 30% more frames on average, and we see that our CPU usage is anywhere from 50% to 60%, and GPU usage at 40 to 70%. Strange, right? Now, going up in resolution at 1440p, we practically make the GPU render larger frames. Using low settings again, we get 59 frames per second, with 50 to 70% GPU utilization, and our CPU usage is still at maximum. The 2600X here is about 25% faster now, and we have both CPU and GPU not being fully utilized. But what happens if we set the resolution at 4K? Running on low settings with the Ryzen 3, we get a 70 to 90% GPU usage, and our CPU usage drops even below 90% at some point. What that really means is that we made our GPU now being optimized more than before, producing almost the same amount of frames as it did at 1080p. Now, using the 2600X, we have a similar effect where the GPU usage has increased up to 99% and our CPU usage has dropped below 50%. But let's go to another game and see another scenario where playing on ultra settings can give you better results than playing on low. Far Cry New Dawn at 1080p low and we get an average of 70 frames with a really low GPU usage due to CPU bottleneck. But as soon as we change it to Ultra, it gives us 75 frames per second and a much better image quality. The Ryzen 5, on the other hand, at 1080p low, manages to achieve an average close to 100 frames. Using Ultra settings, it performs very similar to the Ryzen 3, and even a bit worse for some reason. Running at 1440p Ultra, we have the same effect we get a similar FPS average, and again, the Ryzen 3 is slightly faster here. One thing that I want to notice here is that we did have a CPU bottleneck, although our total CPU usage was only at 50%, and that usually happens if you have a 6, 8, or 12 core processor. In this case, for example, the CPU usage was at 50%, and the GPU also at 50%, and that happened because not all cores were being utilized by the game. So to sum up, when deciding which CPU to buy for gaming, you should always consider what resolution and graphics quality you intend to play games, and with which GPU will you pair it with. In general, the higher you go on resolution and graphics quality, the more GPU and less CPU utilization you have. When you compare two CPUs, you should go low on resolution and graphics quality. The lower you go, the better and more accurate results you will get. But as I already told you, it depends also what games you play and how much CPU dependent are those games. Let's be honest though, there is no point going below 1080p or comparing using only low settings, because when comparing we should stay close enough to reality and how a CPU or GPU will potentially be used by the end user. So here for example, playing at higher resolutions and graphics quality, we have a way smaller gap between the performance of the two processors and the same applies for every single processor out there. Even if you're comparing a Ryzen 5 3600 against an i9 9900K. So that's it for today guys. I hope you found this explanation video useful. If so, make sure to leave a like and share it with your friends. Also, make sure to subscribe for more interesting and useful stuff.